Hi, this is Brian Haberlin from DigitalArtTutorials.com, and I have a lovely John Buscema penciled Tarzan piece in front of me, uh, which I'm going to uh, use as my demo victim for inking styles, is what a bunch of these short uh, for Inktober uh, tutorials I'm going to do. So I'm going to do a bunch of different inking styles and show you how you get there. On this one, I'm actually, since this is the first one, I'm going to show you how you set it up for inking if you don't normally do this kind of stuff. So this is a a pencil of John's. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer and we're going to fill it with white. And there's all kinds of different ways to do this, so you know, really do it to your taste just to get to where you need to. Um, I lower the opacity of the pencils because the pencils are too strong, then you can really fool yourself with your inking that you're not adding the detail or covering the bits that you should be covering. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the top one. And now this style that uh, we're going to do now is going to be using the lasso fill tool. So this is all going to be taking selection shapes and then it will automatically, it's great because if you have to do this in Photoshop, you have to do keyboards that, you know, alt don't fill, fill. As soon as I draw a shape, it fills with the color I have, which was white there at the moment. Let me make it black. And you just draw, you're just lassoing shapes. Now you want to be kind of loose when you're doing this, you know, I'm going to go ahead and, and do some shapes here. So I'm just lassoing around the shape. And then you go pretty fast. This is actually a very great way for, even if you didn't use this as a primary inking tool, if you used it as just how you're going to spot blacks, this is a very fast way to spot blacks. But I'm kind of breaking the mold here and I'm using it as a primary inking tool. And what's kind of nice about it is the shapes that you can get are fairly distinct from any other tool that you could use. You get nice thicks and thins, nice sort of bounce, uh, I can go ahead and see how I'm just kind of scribbling. It kind of gives you then an interesting sort of brush shapey there. And come back in and cover it if I want to. Come back in here. And again, I kind of like that like, you know, whole teardrop thing that it can do. And it gives you a nice kind of like, you know, a little bit of a broken line. You can use it for, for sort of hatching shapes if you want. See? Like here on the neck. Lasso up on the side, straight over here. Start bringing in the hair. I can do bigger shapes in the hair. And you can even try and just do, you know, if you really wanted to be kind of controlled with it, you can sit there and start doing some really refined shapes with it. Again, I'm just going fast with it, staying loose. It's again, as you can see, I think is is a very fast way to get you on your way, even if you weren't going to use this as your primary tool. So lassoing around up here, coming out. I want to leave some white here, so I'm just going to do that shape. It can get you a nice little stylization um, that's kind of inherent in using this tool. Um, that's kind of nice, so uh, I think it's worthwhile. You can get again really nice thin controlled lines if you want if I come back in here what's nice about clip studio is not only just white you can also paint essentially with eraser by going to your tool here so if I want to bring back some some highlights in here I can very easily break up that shape a little bit more go back to black And even like these little bits that John has here, I can kind of do a little version of those. Again, inking, especially too, and this is this is a fairly loose ink job, um, and and it's up to you really to get finished with it. I, I show people inking on pencils like this because if you're inking over someone who's incredibly tight, like Dave Finch or or uh, Jeff Campbell or something like that, then it, it kind of doesn't count. You know, those are the samples that you don't want to see as an editor because it's like, oh, you, you know, you didn't have to make up any lines on your own. You kind of just went with whatever they gave you. But you can see you can get kind of a nice fur thing going with it pretty easily. 
Now one of the tricks to it is the shapes in there. So if I want to do like some sort of feather like that, I want to come down and just close the back end. Okay. If I go like this and just end it, see how it will kind of cross to wherever I lift up my pen? So boom, boom, it will cross. Yeah, now I get that. You know, that could be something that you want, uh, but usually if you want to really control it, you want to bring it and you want to close the shape or get close to closing the shape. But again, you can get like, you know, little hatch lines pretty easily. I'll throw in a couple hatch lines over there. Those get a little strong. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to my white and get rid of that or at least do a line through it. Minimize it. Throw a little bit more into the hair. Now I'm using white now here instead of the eraser tool. They both work. It's a good thing about this stuff is you get all kinds of methods of doing things. The benefits of digital. Of course, one of the great benefits of digital is the wonderful white that you get as a result. And again, you can be loose. You could do double lines if you want with it, so it's not pure stroke there. You get really painterly with this tool if you want. If you kind of think about it like you're you're throwing uh, throwing a uh, sort of a brush shape, but this will force you into being, you know, unless you're going to sit there and just really, just really just trace the heck out of it. Um, it will help you get uh, much more sort of stylized and loose. I mean, look at that shape that I got there. Now, boom, with black. That's nice. You know, get the little monkey's hair. See, I'm throwing them out, throwing them out, throwing them out. Coming back here, getting close to the end of the shape, and then letting it fill. Going back around, back around, back around, letting it fill. I'm going to actually draw that ear. Again, we'll have a little bit of hair there. He's got this nice eye shape that John did, so I'm just doing little lasso shapes to get me there. And what's nice again is, is with this one tool, you can go, you know, very thin. And I can also then, if I just wanted to spot all this black here, boom, just start filling things with black. Or come back in and start doing a half tone fill of the stuff. I'm just going over to kind of, you know, you don't have to sit there. It's kind of almost cross hatching with it. But you see, it's really easy to get the kind of nice fur sort of rendering with it. I'm not exactly sure whose style this reminds me of, but it does remind me of somebody's style a little bit. So we're going to do, again, John's got those nice pencil marks, and I can almost mimic those marks with that technique pretty quickly. There's a little pause. Monkey pause. And again, you know, you got these lines. See, that was what happens when it gets closed off if you don't follow the, the line. So I go back over that, boom, then I have the whole shape that I want. And sometimes if you're doing like these lines, it's e it's better to just do them in chunks. So you like get that side, get the top part, that part, come back in, knuckle, finger, go ahead and kill some of this area in the hand that I went over. Let's see, boom. Again, nice bounce, nice thick and thin. Um, so if you're not really comfortable with doing this with a pen tool, but we'll cover that later in, other in another tutorial, um, 
you can do it here by just drawing the shape. Knuckles, monkey's chin, monkey's eye a little bit more. And so you can be really like fine with it too, you know, just little bits. Come back in here, get some of that fur back going towards that hand. Maybe just fill that in. Again, I just, you know, you can also sit there just kind of making circles if you want to kind of fill in shapes. You know, it can be rendered like, you know, if I just start using this as a rendering tool to hatch in something. It could be good for doing quick foliage or stuff like that. You want to beep something up, you can just come back into it. You want to add some more lines. Feel free. At a certain point, you don't want to overwork things. And that's kind of something you just sort of get with uh, practice. And But there you go. You get this nice sort of brush effect. And uh, it's, a, it's a great fast thinking tool. It's also a great fast just if you want to spot blacks or anything like that. This is, is a very fast tool. So the lasso fill tool, a uh, <clears throat> little trick in, in Clip Studio is actually under the, the line tool here. So it gets a little confusing because you would think it'd be under the marquee tool, but it's not. It's lasso fill. All right, see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please uh, check out our website, digitalartstutorials.com. And if you have any friends or family you think might enjoy it, please, by all means, share away. Uh, there will be a lot more of this stuff coming up. I'm dialing up to do a lot more tutorials, so subscribe and stay tuned for more.